Our quote today is, maybe soy milk is just regular milk trying to learn Spanish. Today we have the great saint of Spain, Saint James, called Saint James the Greater. In comparison to Saint James the Lesser, who was one of the other apostles, probably Saint James the Greater was bigger and taller, but certainly older than the other Saint James. We know that Saint James that we honor today was the brother of Saint John the Evangelist, and that the two of them were fishermen with their fathers, with their father and the hired men. So when Jesus called them, it says, they immediately abandoned their nets and followed Jesus and left their father with the hired men to continue in the fishing industry while they would become fishers of men. Peter, James, and John would be the Lord's inner circle, his closest companions. He would take them into the room when he cured St. Peter's mother-in-law. He took them into the room when he raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. It was only Peter, James, and John that he took up the holy mountain of, of Tabor to manifest his divinity in the transfiguration because he would then take them into the Garden of Gethsemane. And Peter, James, and John, he would bring closer, deeper into the garden where he would sweat blood to show his lowest point where he took upon himself the sins of the world. The Lord had prepared Peter, James, and John in the transfiguration by revealing his divinity and now they see him sweating blood in the garden of Gethsemane. So Peter, James, and John were the inner circle of the Lord. And our Lord dearly loved James and John. He gave them a nickname called the Sons of Thunder, Boanerges, for a few reasons, perhaps because of their zeal, their enthusiasm. When the Samaritan town would not welcome the Lord, James and John said, let us cast down brimstone and destroy their city. So Jesus had to temper them, but he called them the sons of thunder. In today's gospel, we hear how their mother, who was known as Mary Salome, the wife of Zebedee, we know from other sources that she was a cousin of our blessed mother, which would make James and John second cousins of our Lord. So they were related to the Lord. That's probably why she wanted her boys to sit, one at the right and one at the left of Jesus when he came into his kingdom. Of course, we know where Jesus came into his kingdom and that was on the cross. So basically they were saying that they wanted to take the position of the two thieves nailed next to Christ. Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I am to drink, the cup of suffering? And in their enthusiasm, they said, we can. And Jesus says, well, you will drink the cup but those places of honor in my kingdom, which of course would also refer to the kingdom of heaven, and who would be sitting next to Jesus in the kingdom of heaven? Our Lady and Saint Joseph. You don't want to bump Our Lady and Saint Joseph, but James and John wanted these seats and they said, we can. And ultimately they did drink of the cup of suffering. We know that Saint John would be the oldest of the apostles to die, he would die perhaps at the age of 90 or 100, and he would die of love, of advanced age. Whereas James, his brother, James the Greater that we honor today, was the first one to give his life for Christ. He was beheaded by the sword under the order of King Herod Agrippa, who was the grandson of King Herod who tried to kill Jesus as a baby. So Herod Agrippa had James beheaded in the year 44 AD. It's the only apostle mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles chapter, chapter 12 of one of the apostles being martyred during that time. We believe that St. James had gone to Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, around the year 33. He worked there for about 10 years until he came back to Jerusalem where he was martyred. There's an ancient tradition that when St. James was working in Spain that he got discouraged and our Blessed Mother appeared to him in Saragossa, Our Lady of the Pillar, and encouraged him to continue his missionary work. So this is considered the first approved apparition of Our Blessed Mother. Now Our Lady was still alive. She was still in Ephesus. So Our Lady obviously brought, bilocated and appeared to St. James to encourage him. So St. James would be eventually uh, come back in 44, be martyred, 
and then his relics and bones would be taken back to Spain where he had labored for the faith and buried in a field, a field called the Field of Stars, which is Compostela. Eventually the shrine of Santiago de Compostela will be built over the relics of St. James. You can go there today and venerate them. People travel from all over the world to make the Camino. During the Middle Ages, beginning in the ninth century, people would take different routes, a, a route coming from France, which would be about a 500 mile journey, it would take many months, or a southern route coming up from Madrid or other parts of Spain. Sometimes people would you know, do 300 mile pilgrimages. Sometimes it'd be pilgrimages from Portugal coming up from Lisbon. The Camino of Santiago, still over 100,000 people make the Camino every year. It has to be at least 60 miles or 100 kilometers. It could be as much as 800 kilometers or 500 miles. And it's a pilgrimage to remind us of our pilgrimage to heaven. The church itself is on a pilgrimage to heaven. And when we do other pilgrimages, whether it be to the Holy Land or to Rome or to Spain, it reminds us that we're on a journey, that this is not our final destination. We're on a journey towards heaven. So I encourage you to look into the Camino. You can watch some beautiful videos about it, people's journey. You can watch the movie called The Way with Martin Sheen. It's a very good messages in that movie as well. So that movie, The Way. And I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. James. St. James is the patron saint of all soldiers and horsemen. St. James would appear to the Christian fighters during the time when they were fighting against the Moors in Spain. As you know, the Moors came up from Northern Africa and conquered Spain. But beginning with Palaio in 770, it took over 700 years for Spain to be brought back to Christ, to Christianity. It's the only country that was taken over by the Moors that um, was able to be won back for Christ. And that was due to the special inspiration of St. James who would appear to the soldiers and help them in their battle to bring back Christianity to Spain. So I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. James. Through the intercession of St. James the Greater, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.